Daniel Pemberton, an Oscar nominee for The Trials of Chicago 7 this year, is back with Being the Ricardos, new film from Aaron Sorkin out December 10th before coming to Amazon on December 21st. Daniel, you've done all three of Aaron's films as a director. How has your working relationship with him, I guess, evolved since Molly's Game? Uh, well, I first met Aaron uh, on Steve Jobs, actually. Um, I sat next to him and Molly from Molly's Game at the Golden Globes, rather randomly. Uh, and that was the first time we'd actually met. Uh, and he was kind of talking about uh, like moving into directing and that he really loved my score to Steve Jobs. And it's been a really amazing journey working with him. Also, just, just like watching him like, like just progress as a director, every film, it's, it's really spectacular. Um, you know, you've got to remember, Molly's Game was, he was literally a first time director on that movie. And um, it's been a really, it's, it's a really solid relationship between us because it's like a great relationship with directors is where there's a le level of trust. And it's hard to get that trust until you've done a bunch of projects together. And, you know, every film we do, there's, there's great discussion between us both about like, how are we going to make this work? And, you know, what's interesting when our first one, Molly's Game, he was like, I wanted an orchestral score. And I was like, no, you don't. You want a, a contemporary score. And he let me go and do that, which is which was great. And it was that great level of trust. And he was like, oh, you make the right like, call. And what I love about him as, as a collaborator is he he trusts you and he, he wants your input on things. And there's still obviously, you know, you'll always have pushback and from both of us, we'll push back on scenes and try to get things the best they can be for the movie. But by the time it came to Ricardo's, it was like, right, this is what I'm thinking. And he was like, well, that's what I'm thinking too. And so, it, it, you know, it was a, a really, it's always a pleasurable experience working with him. I think he's such a visionary. So let me ask you then, what were you guys thinking for the score here? I've, I've, I've seen the movie, I've heard of it. I'd love to hear like, what were your, what were your goals for the music for this one? And like, what were your conversations like? Well, like I kind of, I read the script and like whenever you read a Sorkin script, the first thing you kind of go is like, ah, oh, shit, where do I fit in? Um, uh, but, uh, cause it's, you know, they're, they're so amazing and there there's, um, you know, there's so much in there. It's like, you don't always find the, the space straight away of like, of, of where you can uh, kind of turn up as, as the composer, but, we both decided that the, this film needed a kind of almost a really classic golden age orchestral score. And my kind of take on it was that like for me is I, I'm, I'm British and it's, you know, I love Lucy is, is uh, not part of my cultural makeup as it is for, for most of America. And that's, that was a very interesting challenge for this project of like trying to look through look through the eyes as an outsider of of this you know thing which in some ways is a define it feels like a defining aspect of the american cultural psyche um and i wanted to write i felt this film needed a kind of a really classic strong thematic approach of a big theme that would work through the film and conclude at the end um, and for me, that was like the first challenge was like, how do I write a theme that can sum up this entire story? Right. Well, the other thing too, I, you kind of mentioned it a little there, but like, you also have this incredibly iconic I Love Lucy theme that I'm sure people like just know, even if they've never seen it, you don't, you don't incorporate that really, or do you incorporate that in the score? I guess like, were you, did you try to like totally ignore that or what were your thoughts? Like, how do you do it? Yeah, like we talked about that early on and we kind of felt the best thing to do was sort of ignore that. It, it, it does turn up in the film, but it's the film in some ways is more about Lucy and Desi and their relationship and Lucy's um, experiences, really. And I wanted to create something that was separate from the show because it felt like we're telling a different story. Like one of the things Aaron was, you know, very adamant about is like, you know, in those classic scenes that are, are so iconic we're not scoring those for laughs we are scoring them to understand 
why those scenes became funny and um, understanding uh, Lucy's or Lucille's like um, very complex thought processes to make something that seems effortlessly like throwaway and funny. We're trying to like show her her brain and how she's thinking about those moments. Right. You also mentioned this a little earlier about trying to find space within Aaron's scripts. He's, he's so obviously known for his quick wit and the dialogue is so sharp and everything. I, when you're writing the music, do you try, how do you like, do you think about trying to complement that or how do you keep up with that? I guess like, how do you, or do you totally go in the opposite direction? Like what are your, what are your thoughts? Like on trying to handle that kind of screenplay. Yeah. I mean, like every film I do, I try and do very differently. So I don't have like, here's my set way of working. And every time I approach a film, I try and approach it very differently. So the way I approach this film is completely different to the rescue, which is the, the other thing I've got out at the moment. And then I'm doing like Spider-Verse two at the moment. And they're all such different, uh, a ways of looking at things so with this one i think the first thing i really want to do was nail the theme so i spent a long time just sitting at the piano um just writing just sitting there trying things out and, and the weirdest thing is i didn't really finish it i kind of got halfway through it and i had to come to the oscars and that was the first time i'd seen aaron for like a, a year because we did all of chicago seven i met him once for a drink uh, in the four seasons bar after the after the Golden Globes, we chatted for an hour about uh, what we wanted to do in Chicago 7. The whole world shut down. I didn't see him, I didn't see anyone in production. Go to the Oscars, I see him for about five minutes until he gets ushered away. Um, and that was my only experience with him. And so I'd had this piano idea and I, was, I ended up staying at um, this guy, Phil Lord, uh, who's one of the Spider-Verse producers house in Malibu, which was great, and I just, I just end up writing it. He has a beautiful big grand piano there. I was like, hey, I'm living like the Hollywood dream. I'm literally in a super, super nice house sitting by a grand piano. And I finished the theme off there. And that is the kind of cornerstone to everything else in the score. And um, once we had that, that would drive how I would score the other moments in the film. So big emotional bits of, you know, everything is seeded from the score. I could play on the piano now, but I don't know if that's a good move. Do you want to hear on the piano? <laughs> I can't know. Let's throw it over here. It's like a terrible gold. Drip. Like, let's just keep right, hang on. My, my flat is a tip. Let's just see. Uh, let's just uh, see if this is going to work. Uh, right, so it goes like this. It goes like... And then in that, you might just, you know, there'd be a scene and you might just take these. You might just take those chords and loop them around, or we've got this melody, this. Mm -hmm. So that would be how I would um, end up like pulling these other things away. With this, it was like, this film is all about the emotion and the melodic continuity of this story. And it would be finding engines and ways to throw that into um, all the different elements of the story. Yeah, it's, it's really incredible. I just like listening to it there. It's, I love, it's just so, the tone is so perfect and so melancholy for, I think, the film. And you really get like, just a lot of it. I, I, I don't, I, I think that that's a great place, place to wrap it up. I, I can't imagine topping that and see, seeing you perform it. Uh, Dan Pemberton, being the Ricardos uh, composer, Aaron Sorkin's new film out December 10th in theaters before it comes to Amazon on December 21st. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you. All right, see you later.